Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you rendering and adjusting the render bounds in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here, and I want to render a final mix. It has three drum tracks, a kick, snare, and toms, a bass track, a guitar, and two keyboards. Let's hear it. So to render it, we'll go up here to the file menu and choose render. But we could also use the keyboard shortcut, which is all control R on the PC or option command R on the Mac. And that opens up the render dialog. We'll start off by choosing our source. I'm going to create a master mix, but we could also create stems, master mix and stems, and a few other options. But to keep it simple, in this video, we're going to focus on a master mix. Then over here, we're going to choose the bounds. It defaults to the entire project. So if we render it now, it's going to render it from the beginning of the project to the end. But there's one problem for me. My song starts at bar three. So if I scroll to the beginning, there's a bunch of empty space right here. So if I render the entire project, watch what happens. We can render it down here or hit return or enter, but it's going to create some blank space in the beginning because it rendered it from the beginning to the end. And if we check it on our hard drive right here and play it, it doesn't start at the beginning. because of the blank space in the beginning. So a quick trick in Reaper is we can create markers for our start and our end to tell Reaper what to render. So I'm going to go to bar three and type shift M, which is going to create a marker and I'm going to name it equals start with all caps and do the same thing at the end. At bar seven, type shift M, but name this one equals end, telling Reaper this is the end of our project. So now if we render the entire project right here, Reaper only rendered from the start marker to the end marker. So it's going to start right away. But if you don't want to set up these markers in advance, let's delete these. We could do it another way. We can also choose to create a custom time range and just type it in right here based on minutes and seconds for our start and our end or the length, or we could use a time selection. So let's create a time selection from the beginning to the end. Open the render dialog and just choose time selection right here. Now it's only going to render based on the time selection we set up. So now if we render it, there's no space at the beginning or the end. So again, it plays right from the beginning. Now, a quick trick when we're using time selections is we only have to set it up once. We can create our time selection, open up the dialog and choose time selection and then change it to custom time range. And it moves that time selection to the custom bounds over here. So if we render this once, it's going to save that time range for future use. So now if we clear our time selection or use it for something else, if we open up the dialog, that custom time range was saved. So it's still here based on the time selection we originally set up. Although we could also save our bounds using our presets right here. Just choose 
bounds and output and save it so we can recall it at any point. Now, if we render using custom time range or time selection, by default, tail is turned on, which adds a thousand milliseconds or one second to the end of our song, which will preserve any reverb or delay tails at the end. But I usually set it a bit longer, about four or five seconds. So now if we render it, there's no space in the beginning, but there's extra space or a tail at the end. So if we hear the file, there's a bit of extra space at the end. And too much is better than too little. Now we could also choose our bounds using project regions. I have a few set up over here for an intro, verse, chorus, and outro. So we could use these or their bounds to render our files. We could just choose project regions, and Reaper's gonna create four renders right down here. Render four files, and they'll be based on those regions. But we should probably rename them using some wildcards. Project information, regions, and that's going to put that region name at the beginning of each render. So it's going to render four files, and we can see them right here. Our intro, our verse, our chorus, and outro. And they're based on the regions up here. Now we could also just choose selected regions. Just go to the region manager and choose the regions we want to render. Let's choose intro and chorus and close it. And now it's just going to render those two regions. As we can see down here, render two files. Render it. And we can see those two files right here, our intro and our chorus. And again, named in a very useful way. Now we could also choose the region matrix, which we can select from over here, the region render matrix. We'll just choose it right from here, which gives us the same options where we could choose which region we want to render. But we could also get more specific and create stems on a track by track basis as well. We could choose instead individual tracks and their regions. We could do all tracks for the intro, for the verse, or the chorus. Or get specific for different regions in our song. Like for a kick, we could just create a stem for the intro and the chorus. Maybe for the snare, we just want the verse and the outro. Maybe the toms, we want all of them, and the bass. So we can create different stems on a track by track basis based on the regions that they play in. And if we want to render it, it's going to render 12 files right from here. Although, we should add a wildcard for this as well for our tracks. So it'll name it a lot clearer. Render those 12 files. And it renders them all, listing their regions, their track for our stems, and the song name. So we can really get very specific for rendering using the region render matrix right here. Or we can keep it simple and just use custom time range, entire project, or time selections, and create master mixes, stems or both. So that's pretty much it. That's rendering and adjusting the render bounds in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.